this stuff here is comes from the local dump or you might call it a refuse tip people take their tree cuttings and stuff to the dump and they get told to put it in a special spot where they put it through a giant mulcher and they compost it for a year or so and then they here they give it away for free some places they might charge a bit for it the only trouble with it is you get a bit of rubbish in it because people aren't that on top of what they put in so this is um, broken down MDF uh, it's a particle board and there's bits of cloth and plastic and all that sort of stuff in it so that's not very good for the compost eh? well I'm not sure I was worried about this stuff because this is from you know the particle board that they make your uh, your kitchens and your cupboards and things like that out of and um, so I explored the glue that they put in it like it's made from wood fiber and I, I googled the glue that they put in it and the glues made from um, what is normally considered a poison formaldehyde it's mm -hmm. formaldehyde is the stuff that you see um, little things preserved in bottles you know a kidney in a bottle or a little dead deformed baby or something in a bottle they preserve them in form formaldehyde however formaldehyde is also something that occurs in living systems um, it gets produced in your body so it's it's not an unnatural product it's just that in high enough dosages it becomes poisonous a lot of things that can actually be good in small dosages actually turn out to be really bad in high dosages so then I it's made from form formaldehyde which is basically going to kill bacteria which I don't want in a compost heap however what what they make it into the glue they make it into is also used as a slow release fertilizer which is really weird so I thought well okay the glue that holds this together is made from formaldehyde so there's going to be a little bit of formaldehyde left in there from the production process and but most of the glue is going to be like some sort of slow release fertilizer so I figure that this stuff seems to break down very slowly in, in compost. It stays there for ages and I figure that's because of the formaldehyde in it. Um, but it doesn't seem to inhibit everything else breaking down around it. So the amount of formaldehyde in it must be pretty small. It's something that life to gets used to because it happens in living systems anyway. Um, and there's perhaps a bit of fertilizer in there as well. So um, I don't worry about it. Some people pick it out. They pick out all the plastic and stuff that's in it. Um, I don't worry too much about it. Sometimes I pull it out. Sometimes I don't. Um, it's like, okay, if it's not actually releasing poisons, um, what's wrong with it? You know, just because it takes up a little bit of space in your soil, big deal. Um, you know, rock takes up space in your soil, you know, and it's a bit lo like a bit of quartz or something, and it doesn't break down. You've got something in your soil there. You don't pick pieces of quartz out of your soil. So this stuff, the interesting thing about it is I've tried using it as mulch, and a lot of people around here have tried using it as mulch. And the trouble with it is, is when it gets bone dry, it becomes water repellent. And, uh, and you can go, oh, I don't want to put, use this because it's water repellent. Um, but you can do exactly the same thing with potting mix. If you just buy a commercial potting mix and allow it to go bone dry, it will become water repellent. So the fact that it's water repellent is a product of biological processes. And if you get it really wet, then it ceases to be water repellent. So it's just a matter of you've got to sit it, put it in, use it in a particular way that its water repellency is not a problem. So it's not really good as a mulch as is, 
because the water can just run off it. The times when I have used it successfully as a mulch, I make a little wall around the outside with it so it's in make it sure it's in a bowl so that any rain or water you put on top of it it can't run off it it will soak in through it but like a lot of mulches um, in areas where there's not a lot of rain one of the biggest problems is that you get a shower of rain the mulch itself absorbs all the rain and the rain doesn't get to the roots that are underneath the mulch so one way around that is what I do here is I sieve it through a screen comes out the bottom is like nice compost. Now this particular screen is about 12 millimeters or about half an inch. I also have another screen which is about half that size, this one here. This one is made of what they call mouse mesh. Um, and if you use this stuff, you'll get really beautiful compost out of this stuff from the dump and it also sieves out all the rubbish. So the stuff from the dump is about 30% beautiful compost. I use this bigger screen because I want to use to get a little bit more of the wood out of it. The reason being is that this stuff, this is what has come off the top of it, this stuff here. And you can see that's very open. And as a mulch in dry areas like this, you really want to use a mulch that the rain passes through. So this is no longer water repellent as a mulch. It will protect the soil from drying out. It will slow release nutrients into it. There's still a bit of compost in there, so it, it will release a few nutrients into the soil in the short term and in the long term, the wood in it breaks down. Um, so this, act, this stuff is quite a reasonable form of mulch in a dry area. Um, but I want to get the smaller bits out of it so that the water penetrates through it properly. So I used a slightly bigger screen and you'll see that there's, there's some small bits of wood still in it and, and that's okay because it's going to go through another composting process. There's a termite there. Um, oh yeah. Termites are all good. They are breaking down Wood on the finger. Yeah, on my finger there. They are breaking down wood and their poo is fertilizer. And actually I was reading some research where they said that um, termites have nitrogen fixing bacteria in their gut that helps to break down the, the cellulose. And so their poo is actually got more nitrogen in it than the wood that they eat. So um, they are quite capable of fertilizing things. Now, this stuff here underneath, I use it in a further composting process where I poo in a bucket, basically. I have a little seat set up over the top of it and I poo in a bucket and then I put this compost on top of it to completely cover it so you get minimal smell flies or anything like that and then when the buckets full I get it when I got a couple of full buckets I go and empty it into the compost heap 
and so I'm composting my own poo and this gets another go at composting to break down those little bits of wood and I've got mulch there that can be used um, on a garden and stuff and you can choose for yourself whether you want to pull the rubbish out of it. So we'll just continue on with this process here. This, where we're just doing the the, comp, the sieving of the compost and this came out you might think it's a snake or even a worm but it's actually a lizard it's called a legless lizard if you can get in really close you can see the little the tiny little vestigial legs on it see that little leg there yeah lovely little thing tends to live in it shows you the process of how snakes became snakes, how the, the legs eventually disappear because they find a different means of locomotion. If you put it on the ground, you'll see it, it moves like a snake. Come on. See, it moves like a snake, so it doesn't need legs. And it burrows in the ground, so the legs only get in the way. <laughs> So, legs are only in the way when you want to do that. <laughs> 